hi, this is Randy Kirk. What on earth happened to the Tesla stock today? What happened to the market in general? What's going on? Well, if you follow this channel and if you saw my video last week, I kind of predicted it. I kind of hit it right on the nose. And let me explain what's going on in my view. What happened today? Can we expect it to continue? And um, okay, let's just jump right in. So if you like this kind of content, obviously like it. That encourages more people to watch it and helps the channel. Uh, join Patreon if you'd like to support the channel and also uh, participate in some of the things that we're doing on Patreon. So let's 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 dive right in. Well, we of course anybody that's invested in Tesla liked what happened today. It's nice to finally see the movements in the right direction after so much time of of discouragement and unhappiness, and maybe that'll cheer up everybody on Twitter. <laughs> Who knows what it'll take? But anyway, so what's going on? What the heck's going on? Okay, so. First of all, I, I really started to get more optimistic the last few days. There's a recognition, I think, at this point, the street and everybody else is starting to say, the Fed is done. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to raise it 0.25 basis points, 25, I'm sorry, 25 basis points uh, in, in, a, in a week or so. It doesn't mean that they're not going to raise it again, 25 basis points in March. What it means is that's it. They're not going to. They're not going to go beyond that. They're certainly going to pause. They've kind of said that. We don't know for a fact that these are going to be two twenty-five basis points raises. They could do zero uh, on Feb one, and they could do zero in March, or they could do some other numbers. So we really don't know for sure. But I think the market is beginning to believe. Hey, worst case, we got another fifty basis points to go, and we're done. Now, part of that thinking, I believe, comes from the fact that the bond market is not buying what the Fed is doing. <laughs> the bond market thinks inflation's over. The bond market is stuck. The 10-year is stuck at around 3.5%. Um, and uh, it's been actually down uh, under 3.5% on a lot of days. Um, so I think the bond market is saying, no, um, inflation is over. Uh, I, I think uh, we have plenty of statistics to to verify that, even lithium is down 20%. So there's a lot of evidence that the prices are falling back to almost pre-COVID levels on commodities and even on some retail uh, price points. Um, so that the, the statement a year and a half ago that this inflation was going to be transitory was right. It was just a much wider, longer transition than anybody's talking about. And one of the things I keep mentioning and uh, for those of you who follow me, you know that I have this theory, which is that there's a we went through what's called a boom bust environment. So there were shortages. Everybody went out and bought everything they could: consumers, wholesalers, manufacturers, importers. Everybody built up whatever capacity they had in order to take advantage of the shortages. So then, all of a sudden, you have all this product being made all this product being shipped, all this product heading towards retail. And then all of a sudden, the consumers have bought all they need. And there's still lots more coming. I've seen this over and over and over in my career. I'm in the bicycle business my entire life. And the bicycle business has, go has gone through so many of these boom busts, I can't begin to tell you. And what happens is after the boom is over and the bust happens, uh, a lot of people are sitting there with inventory. They got to reduce their prices and you 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 get the rest of the point. So that's what we're going through right now. That's what I believe at least. So the, the bust has happened. Um, prices are coming down. The bond market has already figured that out. The Fed, I think, is done. Well, that means it's time for possibly for risk on to happen, for the cash to start coming in from the sidelines. There's tons of cash, maybe the most cash ever on the sidelines, just itching to get back into the market and make more than you can make on T-bills. And when that happens, when the risk on starts to happen, now all of a sudden you get the, F, the FOMO taking place. Now, FOMO happens to retail investors like you and me, but it also happens to institutionals. The institutionals are judged not only by what they did last year, not only by how well they do in any given year, but they're also judged by do they do better than the indexes and do they do better than other uh, institutionals? So they don't want to miss out on the run up either. So that FOMO affects everybody. So cash has obviously been coming back into the into the uh, market. 
And specifically with regard to Tesla, it turns out the retail investor never left. There was reporting just uh, yesterday, I believe it was, that said that uh, retail investors invested at a faster rate, more dollars last year, or the, I think the last half of last year, uh, than they did in all the entire time of uh, Tesla's existence up until then. So I don't know. I, I don't know any details on that. That was just a headline I read. So, all right. So the, the Fed is not pivoting, but the Fed is done, I think, in the mentality of the investors on Wall Street. Um, okay. We can see evidences of risk on. I think the best evidence that risk is back on is crypto. So crypto has gone from six uh, has gone up about uh, twenty percent. Um, it's kind of similar to what Tesla has gone up. So there's a, a, a real clear evidence that there's cash coming off the sidelines and going to riskier type investments. Uh, we've seen also a shift in the market away from the foods and and other kind of safe stocks, uh, and so there is this transition into riskier stocks. These are all things that could be permanent. This could be the beginning of the bull. Uh, we have not been anywhere near the bottom here for quite a while now. So there's evidence that this is a real thing that we are actually starting to move up. So we may or may not be able to buy it, but it's pro it looks like it's getting more and more likely that it's true. Okay, so what about Tesla itself? Well, first of all, Tesla has a delta of at least two times. I've always loved stocks for my entire investing career. I've always loved the stocks that had a delta. The stock itself had a delta, not the option, but the stock itself moves twice as fast, at least in this particular case, as the rest of the market. If the market goes up 2%, Tesla goes up 4 If the market goes down 2%, Tesla goes down 4 So this kind of uh, delta makes the stock more exciting and High, much more profitable if you're able to figure out the uh, the correct over overtime direction. So number one, you got to figure for that delta of two times, and it's today it was you know over two, and commonly it is. Number two, Tesla Tesla is by far, well okay, let's just say it this way. I'm gonna I'm gonna ramp down my hyperbole just a little bit. Tesla is the best performing company of its size by far. Okay, it's not maybe maybe there's other companies that are performing better. They're going from a million to three million, or they're going from you know a billion to a billion five, or something like that, and and making lots of profits or something. But in terms of large cap companies, Tesla is performing by far better than anybody else out there. With a probably we're going to see more than fifty percent total revenue growth, and maybe 60, 70 percent, maybe more profit growth when the uh, earnings report comes out on Wednesday. So, and, and their future is extremely strong. Of course, I'm predicting that they could have 100% growth, overall growth next year when you count autos and energy together, uh, maybe 80% growth in autos, and then the energy could cause the entire company to possibly double in revenues next year. That's a, you know, that's a pretty optimistic view, but it's going to be somewhere in that range, it might be 70% overall, that would be huge all by itself. And profits, again, could be doubling or more um, in 2023 over 2022. Nobody else is performing anything like that in the large cap companies. So you can expect those kind of increases coming out of Tesla. Well, at a certain point, the street uh, doesn't want to miss that. Uh, at a certain point, retail investors don't want to miss that run. Uh, and then you have all of the, you have all the, uh, icing on the cake situations with Tesla. You know, you're basically getting their energy division for free right now. You're basically getting their uh, auto charging stations for free right now. You're basically getting their insurance business for free right now. And of course, um, you know, you're, you're getting the robo taxi business for free right now. So, I mean, it's, it's just amazing what you get when you buy Tesla. You get the automotive business, which is way undervalued compared to its actual worth. And then on top of that, you're getting all this icing on the cake of the parts of Tesla that nobody's valuing at all, much less the optimist potential. Anyway, okay. So Tesla has, the street might be getting, the street might be starting to get a couple of three things. Number one, they might be starting to get that Tesla has pricing power 
and still maintain margins. We've done a couple of videos on that in the last week. Other people have been doing videos on that. It might be that their margins are still over 25%, even after the price cuts. There's a lot of detail that goes into that. I'm not going to repeat it here, but just, just for one, and I think the one that has gotten the least attention is if I normally would have spent $40,000 on a car, and now I can buy that same car for $30,000, that means I can put more add-ons on that $30,000 car because I can afford $40,000. So those add-ons, the things that you might add to the car, uh, paint color or interior uh, interior color or other attributes and turn, in, including FSD, those things become affordable with these huge price drops and the items that you're adding on are sometimes at 100% margin or darn near. So that's a huge way that Tesla margins might be way greater right now than people are anticipating. Okay, number two, it may be that the street is beginning to get that Tesla has position is positioned to continue with huge increases in sales. You know, I think they're the 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 miss, uh, the so-called miss last year because it's not Tesla that missed. It was the it was the folks that were predicting that did the miss. Tesla says we're going to grow fifty percent a year on average. They've never said every year. And they grew a lot more than 50% in 2021. So the fact that they didn't grow as fast in 2022 was not a miss in terms of Tesla's guidance. If you're paying attention to the guidance and words matter, the guidance is 50% a year on average. So pundits and other people estimated that they would grow 50% or near 50%. And, and yes, Tesla did say, hey, we still have a shot. This was back, I, I think, uh, at the third quarter, maybe the second quarter earnings call. We still have a shot at 50% growth this year, but they didn't say that was their, their absolute guidance. They said, we, we, we might have a shot. Anyway, however that works out, however you want to count that, the reality is, is they're, they're probably going to go a lot more than that next year. And I think the street might be starting to figure that out. And then finally, I think the street is beginning to see, or maybe they'd, not even a matter of seeing, this might be just a, a matter of forgetting or beginning to say, uh, whatever, to both Elon Musk's politics and also to the whole Twitter overhang. Uh, these things might have affected, well, definitely, let's let's just say they definitely had some effect on the down on the downturn last year as the stock market and the stock were both floundering. Uh, just one more thing to add in to reasons to sell. Uh, definitely might have affected it by 10 or 20 or 30%. Who knows what that number might be? But Going up, I think at this point, people are going to be like, uh, you know what, that's really irrelevant compared to this growth and these potential profits and the cash flow that the free cash flow that's being thrown off. No, we need to be a part of this story. So that's my approach. That's my thinking. Oh, I'm sorry, I would have been it would have been so bad of me not to give you what I think might happen in the next few weeks. Number one. The earnings call, This is some of what's happening right now is advance of the earnings call. The reason it might have been up 7% today or 8%, whatever it turned out to be, uh, compared to the market at maybe 2 um, might be due to the fact that people are trying to get in ahead of the earnings call, expecting some good results. The earnings call good results on the actual uh, per share earnings that it turns out that they turn out to, to provide is important, but there is a couple of way more important things than what the earnings call, what the earnings turn out to be, and that's going to be in the guidance. So I'm looking for what is the what is the energy story, as much detail as possible. And it looks like it's the number one question from retail investors is going to be the whole energy story, the whole Lathrop story. How much are they doing now? What is the capacity? How soon do they ramp to that capacity? What, what is the overall timing? What is What are the expectations of second Lathrop's are more like that? Uh, how fast is that whole thing going to happen? What are the margins? Of course, I don't think that they're going to tell us the margins, but they might uh, give us some indication of the margins. But will it be separated? Will it be will Lathrop and, and the energy division be separated out in a way that we can really follow it? That would be so helpful. So that's some of the, the number one question uh, that the retail investors are going to be asking on Wednesday. I'm extremely excited to see those results, and it could very definitely affect the market in a positive way, or if it's unexpectedly uh, uh, understated or 
or if they uh, they don't tell a strong enough story about that, well, there would be a lot of anticipation going in that might be shut down, and and so there could be some losses as a result of that. And this is what commonly happens with these earnings calls: is that uh, expectations get shot down by conservative guidance. The number two thing would be: I'm sure people are going to want to know about the 4680, um, and that is, I think, one of the top uh, questions right now: what is the ramp looking like on 4680? Uh, how soon do we think that we're going to be fully ramped on 4680? That's a, a critical, critical question. Um, and uh, again, if they give soft guidance, if they give uh, even negative guidance, uh, where we're not doing as well as we'd like or something, uh, that could definitely have a downturn on the stock. Um, the third thing is going to be when does Cybertruck actually start production? Um, you know, they're probably going to say second half. They're probably not going to give us anything that we, <laughs> any detail that will really be helpful but uh, anything will be better than nothing. Um, and uh, I, there was maybe one more thing. But anyway, those are the kinds of things that we can see the market go up during the release of the earnings because maybe there's a beat on profits. And then possibly in the earnings call, they're very conservative and don't meet expectations of especially the retail crowd. And so we could see some sell-off afterwards. And this is so common. Uh, with Tesla earnings calls. It was used to be common with Apple calls. I used to be, my mind used to be blown as I listened to Apple calls and the stock would go down, even though I could see clearly that Apple was on a trajectory that was just going to be crazy. So those are some things to watch for. The other thing to watch for is that this market, if it's, if we're in a new bull, keep in mind, bulls don't go straight up. <laughs> so there's going to be an up and then there's going to be a down. So there's going to be a retracement of the negative uh, will that be a 30% retracement, a 40% retracement? So watch for these, you know, nice ups, but then there's going to be there's going to be some downward uh, pressure at certain points as people sell. I saw on Twitter today people that were selling uh, some or some of their position on Tesla today, uh, taking the profits um, or grabbing uh, back some of the what they thought they lost. Um, so, you know, there's always reasons why people are going to be selling um, at certain levels. Um, so just keep in mind that it's not a it's not a straight slope. If you're a long term investor, not really an issue. If you're a short term investor, just a couple of thoughts. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own homework. If you like this content, please like subscribe. And please, I need uh, more folks in Patreon in order to make it happen. We're going to have a great time on Patreon, looking at the future, thinking about the future, preparing uh, content that will be used in my next book, The Elon Musk Magic. And if you haven't bought The Elon Musk Mission yet, please help me and the channel and buy a copy. It's been great talking to you.